Wait, why was he so buddy buddy with Cassie then? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 42nd episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 247th episode overall titled The Rival Rangers. We begin this episode on the space base where Divatox is very happy with all the gold that's been brought to her. Porto also tells her that the Shark Zord will soon be finished, and Divatox is supposed to be piloting it, but she says no no no, it's going to be piloted by Porto, just like she claimed in the end of the last episode. Ta-da! At the youth center, Ashley is teaching hip hop dance to some girls. She asks if everyone has a ride home and some guy's there picking up his little sister. Stone asks Ashley if she has tickets to Saturday night's dance and she says she doesn't even have a date. This feels like Stone is about to ask her out to the dance, but thank God that doesn't happen. She spots the guy picking up his sister and she asks Stone if he has bought tickets to the dance and Stone says he bought two, but he doesn't have a date. Why the hell does Stone know this? When did he turn into this town's creepy uncle? This guy and his little sister are messing around and he gets ice cream on his nose. His name is Bobby and actually introduces herself. You might not remember this, but Bobby was actually already in a previous episode of Power Rangers Turbo. That is, Built for Speed. He was actually in that stunt show with Adam that was based around the 50s. His little sister is named Mandy and she loves Ashley's class. Ashley offers to teach Bobby to dance. Then Cassie shows up and Bobby already knows her. He finds out that they're best friends and Cassie finds out that Ashley wants to improve his dancing. He leaves with his sister and then the two girls talk about how cute and nice he is. At school, Ashley sees Bobby and she goes over to her locker trying to be nonchalant. He leaves a few girls walking over to her. He mentioned the dance on Saturday and he asked if she isn't doing anything. Would she give him that dance lesson? What a dick. She agrees to do it tomorrow. Then Cassie shows up getting Bobby to go to the park and Cassie gives a little wave as they leave. Love when we pit women against women. TJ then shows up at his locker and Ashley asks TJ to go play catch at the park. That's lame. Cassie and Bobby are in the park and Cassie is playing the acoustic guitar and a ball comes hurtling towards Bobby's head. Apparently, Ashley tosses it to mess up Cassie. Okay, I like this episode. They all start playing catch and Cassie intentionally throws the ball super hard at Ashley who gets pissed. She then tosses it toward a sprinkler yelling for Cassie to go get it and she falls down in the water getting pissed. Bobby helps her up and she says she's fine. Ashley is also just laughing at Cassie and TJ is staring at her. Cassie and Bobby get into Bobby's car getting ready to go and TJ and Ashley walk away. Then Bobby's car won't start and Ashley is about to ask about the dance, but then Ashley comes over explaining that he flooded the engine. He pops up the hood and she fixes it and Cassie explains that she took auto shop. Okay, awesome callback. Then Ashley leaves and Cassie's communicator goes off and she's clearly frustrated. They meet up and TJ explains that Justin and Carlos need them. Cassie asks if they can just handle it because Bobby. TJ is like, Bobby will have to wait, they need us. Shift in the turbo. The five rangers are together fighting against Elgar, Rygog, and Piranatrons, and I guess this is like a lumber yard of some sort. TJ then starts fighting Elgar and Rygog at the same time, tossing them into each other. He calls out Lightning Cruiser, who fires at them via his headlight lasers. I guess. Elgar then almost blows the plan by saying that Deep Tox is about to send down something, but then they leave. Carlos says he'll talk to Alpha to see if he can find anything on the sensors, and Cassie says she has to go, so she leaves. Finding that Bobby left. Her guitar was in his car. What the hell? At the study area at school, Ashley gets approached by Bobby and he asks if Cassie is okay because she disappeared on him and Ashley just lies and says, that's how Cassie is, flaky. What a bitch, I love it. Then some girl named Glenda sits down and Ashley asks if they're on for the dance lesson and Bobby gets embarrassed but Glenda says she could use a lesson too. Bobby leaves and the two girls laugh. At the dance lesson, the little girls are dancing and Mandy complains that her feet hurt a lot so Ashley wants to check her out her feet. Mandy says that Bobby hasn't asked anyone out yet, but he likes a girl, but he's way too chicken to ask. Ashley asks if he said who it was, and just before Mandy has a chance to say who it is, Bobby shows up. Their mom is taking Mandy home, so Ashley and Bobby begin their private lesson. Ashley then does some simple moves to show to Bobby, and wow, this dancing is terrible, not gonna lie. When it's slowed down, it looks a lot better. Also, why are there freaking plants everywhere in the youth center? Then Ashley's communicator goes off and she tells Bobby to keep practicing. She steps out, hearing from Alpha that Divatox is on a rampage. They see that she has a new Zord, so Ashley's on her way. All five are there together, and Carlos says this new Zord blew up an abandoned ship in the harbor. Also, Demetria says that this new Zord can operate in the water. Shift into Turbo. All five rangers show up at the bay, fighting off Elgar and some Piranatrons, and Ashley tosses one pretty brutally down a flight of stairs. The rest of this fight is pretty good too, except for Justin's weird ass. TJ and Elgar fight one on one and TJ takes out his blade. The two sword fight for a bit until Cassie comes in, kicking Elgar back. Elgar then retreats. Alpha calls, saying that the Shark Zord is heading downtown, so the rangers call it their Rescue Zords, forming the Rescue Megazord. Porto is piloting the Shark Zord, fighting against the Rescue Megazord. He sends out his fin, which hits the rangers from behind. Then he pushes them into the bluest water I think I've ever seen diving down to the bottom of the ocean to fight the Megazord. The rescue Megazord is losing a lot of power doing this underwater fight, so they need to get back on land, so they use their power boosters on the front to float up to the top. The Shark Zord follows, but before anything else can happen, here comes Robo Racer in battle mode, punching the Shark Zord back. 
Justin says that they're still losing power and the systems are shutting down. They need to call out the Turbo Zords, forming the Turbo Megazord. Is Bobby just dancing all alone back at the Youth Center at this point? They hit back the Shark Zord, but they're still losing power. I feel like the Shark Zord is kind of draining them of power somehow. Couldn't tell you how. Then Carlos puts the reverse power on, which I feel like they're main backup power. And Blue Centurion says he'll draw Shark Zord's fire so that the Rangers have one clean shot. And he grabs the Zord, pulling it to the side. The Rangers take their one shot at Porto, knocking him out of the Zord. So Blue Centurion just lets the body go limp. Okay, end of Megazord battle, I guess. At the Youth Center, Justin, TJ, and Carlos just bought tickets to the dance and Bobby comes over asking for advice on how to ask a girl out. Carlos says it's easier to just do it instead of thinking about it. Then Bobby says there she is and both Ashley and Cassie are behind him. The boys watch. In slow motion. Bobby walks towards Ashley, but then he passes her. He then walks to Cassie, but then he walks by her too. Then he goes to Glenda the good bitch, asking her to the dance. Irony. Cassie and Ashley then apologize to one another about how they were being such jerks to one another. They agree to remain best friends. Come over to the boys talking about how they don't have any dates. TJ and Carlos both have dates already, and Justin says he'll take them both, so they have a deal. Okay, the end. This episode's really fun because it has, like, a really big thing in it. I mean, no one has outright mentioned how many evil Zords Zebratox has been trying to make, and each time she gets a little bit more successful. I think it's really cool how there's this little plot backdrop throughout the last few episodes. Other than that, seeing Cassie and Ashley interact with each other in this way is amazing. It really helps the two actresses shine when there's actually some real conflict between the two of them, and overall, it just makes it a lot more fun to watch. Also, Bobby not choosing either one was a good way to resolve it, because if he picked one of the two girls, it still caused some animosity realistically. Next time, Bulk and Skull get back in on the story of the day plots, but until then, may the power protect you.